and uh, we're here to talk about natural gas. Um, I want to welcome you all and thank you for coming. Um, it, it's a really good time to be in Boxport. Uh, for the first time in the town's history, we have a, a new source of energy that's safe, reliable, and affordable. And uh, it took uh, several years to make it happen, but it's, it's finally here. And, uh, you're being heated by natural gas tonight. This building is running on natural gas for heat, so that's a really good thing. Um, the purpose of tonight's meeting is, as I said, to talk about uh, the gas service that's in town. We have several people come up tonight and speak, um, representatives from the uh, banking system to talk about how to pay for the conversion of natural gas. We're going to have uh, Banger Gas to speak. Um, and hopefully answer all your questions. And at the end, I think, I think we're going to take questions or we can certainly uh, talk to one of us afterwards for the next few days also. Um, those of you who don't know, uh, I grew up in the Midwest, and so um, I like to say I've had a gas my whole life. <laughs> uh, I grew up with natural gas, so uh, it's, it's not certainly nothing new to me, but uh, it is a really good thing. Um, I know uh, it's a challenge installing the lines in Maine. It's much different than through the, the flat cornfields of Illinois that uh, I, I grew up in, but uh, it all worked out, and, and it's the first year, hopefully several years of expansion of the uh, everyone get a chance to have gas. Um, uh, let me introduce uh, Dave Miles. Uh, he's the economic development director in town, and, and he will uh, talk about the rest of the evening. Thank you, Mr. Brennan. My job is to uh, this evening is to, to to do the puppet shows in between the. Uh, Speakers and, uh, and to be able to introduce those uh, those folks, so be prepared for the quality uh, uh, puppet shows. The, uh, as Mr. Brennan said, uh, there is going to be an opportunity at, uh, at the end for uh, questions. Uh, so if you have some, we want to write them down as we're going through this, and we'll uh, we'll begin with uh, a presentation from. Bangor Natural Gas talking about the, the benefits of natural gas. So, Andrew? Thank you, Dave. Good evening. I see a lot of uh, smiles on people's faces. It's a great day to be alive. We have natural gas in Buxton. And as I say, Buxport now has gas. Before I, before I start, I want to introduce some of my colleagues that are sitting out in the front. We have Andrew Riley, who did a heck of a job running the crews. He's our construction supervisor, who did a hell of a job constructing and putting the pipeline here in Buxport. And uh, next to him is Michael Boggs. Michael is our safety expert at Bangor Gas. And then third and last but not least is Matt King. Matt is our account executive, our sales representative, who will be working with all of you if he already has it on converting to natural gas. Again, natural gas, we're really excited about the opportunity to serve customers in Bucksport and partnering with Bucksport area residents and businesses to move towards energy independence and break our dependence on foreign oil. Let me just take a couple of moments just to do, give you an overview of Bank of Gas. We're a distribution company in central Maine, or people call the utility and LDC, a local distribution company. We currently have 45 active customers. The company was acquired by Energy West in 2008. And we started at the end of 2008 with 500 customers. So you can see we're growing very, very quickly. We have a plan, a market plan in place over the next four years to reach 10,000 customers, and part of that growth will be in the Boxport community. We have the lowest delivery rates per decatherm in Maine. And just recently, you can see in the, the map that we just acquired in 2012, the Loring Pipeline. And the Loring Pipeline was a pipeline that delivered jet fuel 
hope from Cedar Fork all the way up to Limestone. When we purchased that asset in 2012, we cleaned it, cleaned it out, we purged it, we then changed all the valves to natural gas valves, we pressure tested it, and we have gas in it now from Bangor up to Manabonkeg, and we're looking at bringing on the town of Lincoln, specifically Lincoln Paper and Tissue, next year. A little overview of uh, sales and marketing on natural gas. Um, the three P's, as I call them, product, price, and place. The product, 90% of the gas consumed in the U.S. is American made. It creates energy independence, and it breaks our dependence on foreign oil. It's also a product that is green. Natural gas emits 90% less particulates into the atmosphere than oil and 30% less carbon dioxide. Now we'll talk about price. It's the low cost energy in the country. 2013 natural gas prices averaged 99 cents compared to a gallon of propane and a dollar 47 compared to a gallon of number two fuel oil. We're currently in Bucksport, we're in Bangor, we're in Brewer, we're in Old Town, we're in Warno, and we're in Vesey, and soon to be in Lincoln, Hamden, and Searsport. This next map just shows you that natural gas is nothing new. It's new to Bucksport, but it's not new in the United States. And this map can show you the natural gas pipeline network in the United States. The blue is the interstate pipelines and the red is the intrastate pipelines. And you can see all the way up here at the top right in Maine, we have Maritimes Pipeline that runs through the state of Maine, through Bangor, and that's where we get our gas to serve Bucksport. Then that lane goes all the way down and serves the, the areas of Boston and New Hampshire. The next picture on, on the screen is the route that we took running through Bucksport. This is, this is phase one, and the, the goal here was to get the big users, get the municipal buildings, and also to get all the schools and get them online so they can take part in getting the low-cost fuel as natural gas. Phase two, we're currently under review for next year. And we plan on extending it down Main Street to get to the town offices. And we're also looking at extending it even further to get some more businesses in Bucksport and obviously some more residences. That being said, I wanted to turn it over now to my colleague, Matt King. He's the account executive in Bucksport. And Matt will be dealing with uh, all the residents moving forward to convert them to natural gas and Process. Matt's going to talk a little bit more about how natural gas is used in residential and businesses. Hello everyone. Yeah, my name is Matt King. I'm a county executive at Bangor Natural Gas. And again, my job is just to work with the uh, residence owners and business owners in the area, um, answer any questions you might have. Um, if you want to ever give me a call and pick my brain, Um, so why would you want to use natural gas? Um, well, it's used right now for uh, heating, cooking, electricity generation, uh, as we see here in Bucksport. Um, industry in the production of synthetic materials such as paint, fertilizer, plastic, and grease, and a lot more. Although the burning of natural gas produces carbon dioxide, as Andrew said, and it produces a lot less um, than alternatives. It's much cleaner uh, than coal or petroleum. Uh, slightly more than half the homes in the United States, uh, about 55%, uh, use natural gas as their main uh, heating fuel. What is it used for? Well, as you see, there's a little pie chart there that shows you um, 
water heaters, clothes dryers, and other appliances. He also supplies energy for numerous industrial processes. He provides raw, raw material for our baking bin and products used every, every day. So what are, what are, if you own a home, home here, what are you going to use natural gas for? Well, you know, the big thing is heating. You know, like living in, uh, in Maine, we have, uh, we have a little bit of a cold spell, um, you know, for about six months uh, every year. So uh, that's one of the big, uh, big benefits to, to natural gas, is using it for heating, um, hot water, uh, you know, fire pits, gas lights, patio heaters, um, pool heaters is one we're seeing a lot in Bangor now, barbecues, fireplaces, kitchen appliances, garage, space heating, clothes dryers. So really, uh, even comparative to um, electricity, we're a fraction of the cost. So the more appliances that you can get on natural gas, the better. And don't think you have to do it all at once. You, know, you can just start off with just your heating system. And then next year you can do a clothes dryer. Next year, uh, your pool year. You, know, you can do a piece by piece, you don't have to do it all at once. Um, but just know that the more you get on natural gas, the more money you're going to save. Uh, natural gas burns more clean than other fossil fuels. Obviously, that's a big, uh, you know, we all want to be as green as we can, um, you know, especially when it's as affordable as it is. Uh, it makes it pretty beneficial. Um, but it does burn a lot cleaner. Um, a lot of um, electric generation in the United States has switched over from coal um, to natural gas, which is one of the, uh, one of the big reasons that um, CO2 levels uh, have fallen. Uh, just as of last year, to 1985 standards or levels, so they start emissions uh, emission levels. So um, it's a very clean way to generate uh, you know, power and uh, very beneficial. So that is, and obviously, of course, as Andrew already said, the price. The price is is really what is going to benefit you directly. You know, that's that's the thing that's going to really bring it home. You know, when you can heat your home for half uh, the cost or less than you currently do under oil, and obviously it's a big benefit. Um, so that's my piece, and next I think we have, I think it might be it. Okay. Next we have Michael Bob to talk about um, some safety. Thank you. Hey, good That's my boss. I am the I am the Field Services Supervisor for Bangor Natural Gas. I'm also a national program. I've been talking about it. I'll use one of those times. We're recording it, so I'll talk about it. Oh, I guess that does happen. Uh, field Services Supervisor. I'm, if you narrow that down, I'm the Inventory Control Supervisor. If you narrow that down even more, I'm the Stockholder.
probably saw laid all over the street all summer long. This is a four inch plastic gas pipe. The vast majority of the pipe going through town, that drawing was up on the board a few minutes ago, is this four inch plastic pipe. This is carrying the 55 pounds of gas pressure through the main streets and the side streets and stuff throughout the town. Until you get down here to where this brand new pavement is, that bridge coming into this building, then it's reduced down to two inch. Still carries an awful lot of gas, but this is the same stuff, it's just a little thinner. But it still carries that kind of gas pressure, for about 50 some pounds. Then, not in this building specifically, because I think it's probably at least a one inch, if not a two inch service, probably a one inch. But for your homes, by the way, who in here are gas customers or are going to be? Got a few. Good, good. Thank you very much, first and foremost. Coming into your houses is this little half inch piece of pipe, which surprises a lot of people. So we're taking 1,000 to 1,200 pounds of gas pressure on Mornington Mountain, bringing it into the city at about 500 and some pounds, out of it, down through the city at about 50 some pounds, and down the streets and into your house. And by the time it gets to, through this and to this meter assembly right here, it's going to be about one quarter of one pound of prayer. So, that's quite a reduction of prayer. And that's all your stove or your furnace or your hot water even needs. It doesn't need all that massive amount of prayer. This, for you customers who have been hooked up already or are going to be, this is a typical residential gas meter. This is what you're going to see hanging off the side of your house or the front of your house, wherever the case may be. The inlet out of this obviously is measuring the flow of gas used at your house, and the outlet of it connecting to the pipe that goes in through your foundation or whatever it is down in your boiler system. So this you're going to see, this is going to become normal in the city. Hanging off the side of it, you're going to see this little unit. This is called a regulator. This is actually what does this is actually what does the majority of the work. I don't think this is working any longer. Um, this is doing the majority of the work as far as reducing the pressure going into your house. Coming into this, I don't think this is working Coming into this is the 55 pounds or so of pressure coming off the street. Coming out of this, going into this meter and going through this little pipe, is the quarter of one pound of pressure going into your house. So this is actually what's doing all the work. This thing, you're not going to see the majority of it, you're going to see about that much. That's a barrier line. The rest of this is going to be underground. This is what this is called a riser. This is going to be underground, if you notice it's got that half inch pipe at the end of it. This is going out to the street. So this is all buried underground. This is still got the plastic pipe inside, it comes up here, and you're going to see that much sticking under the ground. It's going to be mounted on a bracket, ideally mounted to the house to give it some strength. All the rest of the stuff that's going to be up here is going to be connected to this. And that's where, basically, where our portion of it stops. Once it gets past the out, outside outlet of that meter, then it belongs to you and your contract. So whatever is inside the home belongs to you and your contract, which is a good point. From a safety standpoint, we're not, quote unquote, responsible for anything downstream of the meter going into your home. Now, if you call us or call the fire department and say, I smell gas, we will respond. Regardless of whether it's ours or not, that's our job. We will probably, if it's an inside problem, if it's a problem with your furnace or your stove or your fireplace or whatever, we will stop the flow of gas and stop the problem, but we can't fix it. We're not a thank you. We're not a service company. This is working good. We're not a service company. That's up to you and your contractor uh, or whoever put the, put the system in for you. So that's a major point. The output of this meter, the gas, the gas is going to be coming in deeper on this side, going through the meter, obviously, for measurement, coming out this side and connecting into the piping going into your house. So from the 
expect the same thing from Buster. What I want you to take away from this meeting, though, is you need two phone numbers, and I'll leave some business cards also. 941-9595. That is Bangor Gas's number. We're in a brand new location out of the airport in Bangor. That's the number you need to remember or write down and post it in the refrigerator or whatever the case may be. If it's during working hours, obviously we're going to answer the phone. We'll respond immediately, be your Johnny on the spot, take care of business. If it's after working hours, and this is kind of important, between 5 p.m. in the evening and 8 a.m. in the morning, if you have a problem, you still call the same number, but you're going to get an answer in the You get a voice, you get a voice recorder that will connect you to the answering service. We have a 24 hour answering service. A human being, which is unusual nowadays, a human actually will answer the phone. And to make it even better, that human will connect you to one of our on-call technicians. So you'll talk to people. It won't be a place hold, it won't be a voicemail, we'll call you back, etc. You're going to talk to a person. Our answering service will put you in direct contact with our on-call technician. Andrew Riley is one of our on-call technicians. I'm on call now as an on-call supervisor. All the on-call people, we, we can carry these text pages, which are almost outdated nowadays. Nobody carries a page anymore. But we still carry text pages. This gives name, address, phone number, and a basic idea of what the problem is. It comes to me, and it also comes to the technician. Same time. So two people are getting that information, whether it's 2 o'clock in the morning in the middle of January and it's 20 below, or it's the middle of summer and it's still, remember when it was actually light at 9 o'clock in the night? Those, those days were going for six months. Um, but the point being is, we are 24-7. We're there for you all the time, regardless of what's going to happen. You call us if you have a problem. Now, two different situations. If you have an outside leak, in other words, something smells funny on the outside of the house, it gets treated a little bit different. One of the biggest differences that you're going to find with natural gas, or maybe you know about this, natural gas versus propane. Propane is heavier than air. It sinks down. If you have a, a leak of propane in your basement, it's going to lay down the floor. It's just going to slowly build up. If you have a leak of natural gas in your basement, it's lighter than air. It's going to rise. It's going to try to get out. So outside, let go. It's gone. Atmosphere, you know, it's fine. Inside, though, still, that, that's an issue. You want to make, make sure you're aware of any situation that you think you need to take care of. Another important point. Gas coming out of the ground, natural gas coming out of the ground, has no smell. And everybody's going, oh, wait a minute. We can still smell it. That's because it is odorized for us. Maritimes and Northeast Gas Company odorizes the gas with a stinky smell, and I actually, believe it or not, brought some scratching sketch for everybody, so you can actually scratch it and smell what it's brought next. It's a very unusual odor that everybody will immediately recognize that that's a gas here. Propane has something similar. Uh, I can tell the difference between the two. There is a different type of odor used in each one. There's a difference. But the smell is still the same. It's very distinct. It's like skunk. Everybody smelled skunk at one time or another. That's a very distinct smell. This is rotten eggs. And it will immediately go right through your nose in a very, very small quantity, like parts of the body. That is an indication that gas has leaked out of the pipe. The idea, obviously, is the gas stays inside the pipes. If it leaks out, we got issues. So if you smell anything that smells like rotten eggs, like natural gas, or like, yeah, rotten eggs, there's an issue inside or out. You immediately call us and or 911. You can call both. That's fine. Uh, I was lucky enough to train the fire department here, I think it was a month or six weeks ago, I forget how long ago that. Trained all the fire department. We had two or three hour lecture on everything to do with natural gas and their responsibilities and ours and so on and so forth. So they're out to speed on what they need to know. We need to make sure you guys are as well. All you need to do is make a phone call. Call us or you call 911. And it makes no difference which one first. Call both. Better safe than sorry. Um, but that's what the O is for, so that you can immediately smell an issue with natural gas. That's all it's for. It does nothing else. You during the winter time, and you guys are getting this kind of like at the start of winter, um, there's gonna be some some load obviously on your home that you can use your heat more and more, or your stove, or plug dryer, or whatever. You're gonna notice that. Obviously, you're going to have usage of the gas. If you step outside and stand beside these regulators and meters, you're probably going to hear maybe sometimes some unusual noise. They do make some noise. You'll hear maybe a little whirring sound. You may 
customers or even, even some of the newer customers that just have come on. I'll stick around after the, uh, the meeting this evening to answer any questions that you may have. Thanks. Thank you very much. Uh, a little bit out of uh, order here, but in order to keep those in sync, uh, there's an important part of that message that I, I want to make sure that it gets across to you. And uh, Chief Bowden from the uh, Foxborough Fire Department is here. So, uh, Chief Bowden, if I could get you to come up here and talk a little bit about, the, about that training that uh, we're doing about. Again, let people know. Anybody that camps or has a, a motor 
a home or a camper trailer, those all have propane detectors because that's what you use in a, in a camper. And those are mounted along the floor. A natural gas detector goes near the ceiling because, like he said, it's light in the air and, and that's where it goes. He did mention the odor. If you have the odor in your house, don't call from your house, leave your house. You can leave your door open as you go. Make the call from outside of the neighbor's house. Um, there's, there's not really any need to, to stay behind. And you know, the best thing to do is evacuate and ventilate and give us a call and we'll, we'll come see what's going on. Um, I think that's about it that I've got. Uh, like I said, we've been, we've been working with natural gas for 15 years and propane responses for forever. Uh, and, and the number one key is proper installation. Hire the right crew to do it. Make sure it's maintained and keep stuff away from the meters and the lines that are around the house. So. Anybody have any questions while well, I'm up here? So I'm not coming back. <laughs> <laughs> One thing I just uh, want to add to, to, to Chief Bowden's comments is, you know, as as residents, we oftentimes uh, you don't want to bother the fire department. Uh, you uh, you may have you, you think that there's a leak somewhere, but you're not really sure. Or it, you, there was a smell, but then it went away, and so you don't want to bother with it. Um, you know, they've told me you know numerous of times. You know, they'd rather have they'd rather be bothered. You know, call them, let them come out. Uh, you know, check things out. They'd much rather be. Uh, uh, you know, be called like that and have it turn out to be nothing rather than to have to come back later on because something is a lot more dangerous. So please uh, don't uh, um, don't feel like you're, you're putting anybody out. Um, that's what uh, you pay them for is to, to be on call um, and to come, you know, check on these things when there's a, a potential emergency. So thank you. Um, next thing I want to talk about is, as, as you heard, uh, Bangor gas is Responsibility uh, ends when it gets to your to your building, and I get an awful lot of questions from citizens as this process has been going forward. Is that you know who's responsible for what? How does that you know how does that all work? And, and I said as you heard this evening that you know Bangor Natural Gas will uh, their responsibility. If, well, the best way I can explain it is it's sort of like the telephone. Um, is the telephone you know they're responsible to bring it to the side of your house. Goes inside your house. It's you know it, it's your your responsibility, and or, and you deal with those through those those uh, through a different type of contractor. And I asked uh, uh, the folks from Osborne Plumbing and Heating uh, to come tonight to be able to explain uh, that that part of the whole process that's from you know the outside of the building to the uh, appliance that you're you're using. So uh, the next speaker is uh, Nick Osborne. Who's going to talk a little bit about uh, you know, the workings of uh, uh, how, as a new user, how do you deal with the stuff from the side of the house to the end of the house? So, thank you, Nick. Well, this was kind of a last minute thing for me. Uh, you've seen the program, my father was supposed to be here, uh, but he ended up being sick, so he called me. Uh, I'll start where he uh, left off with the meter. Uh, they're responsible once the meter one is mounted on your home. Uh, you guys either have a contractor pick or are in the process of picking one. Uh, once that happens, you call the contractor once the meter one is attached to the building. From there, you make sure the one, they have to have a proper propane natural gas license. Uh, before Bangor Gas will turn the, uh, the building on, uh, they actually have to have a document that is signed. Um, a few cold things have to be done, pressure test on your gas lines in the home. Uh, once that's completed, they'll turn the gas on. Um, but what our responsibility is, is we run the gas line from the outlet of the meter mark, which is the great thing that most of you guys have seen on the buildings. Uh, we run the pipeline through every home. The exterior piping, um, where it penetrates the wall through into the basement, or to the exterior of the house to room heaters, or gas stoves, boilers, pool heaters, etc. As you saw from the slide, you basically can run most appliances on natural gas. Um, from there, um, you have disposal of your oil tank. You have a choice in Bucks 
forth, they won't necessarily require you to remove them. Um, state law requires us to at least disconnect the fill line, um, and in some cases, drain them. If you remove your oil boiler, uh, some of you are going to convert your existing system to natural gas. Um, in that case, you can dig your oil tank as long as you cap the oil line, unhook the fill line, and leave the oil burner on the premises. That way, if you ever want to convert back to oil, you can. But if you decide to remove your oil burning appliance, say you go with a high efficiency gas oil, that oil will never run on oil, so the oil tank has to be removed from the house. This is state law. Um, some companies I know don't do that. Um, we, we are actually required to do that. Um, so that's more or less what the process is. Um, either we have 60 days once it's hung, once you meet it once it's hung on your own to connect to the um, appliances. You don't, like you said, you don't necessarily hook up your whole home if you want to do just your water heater, just your boil. Um, you can do that. And we can actually leave off um, appliance connections inside the home that are capped off for future appliances so that you're not paying to have a new gas line run every time. You just connect to that point and run to the appliance. Um, as long as there's planning being done in the beginning, um, most contractors are able to do that. Um, usually that's one of the first questions I ask when I go look at one of your homes is how many appliances do you want? Is there future um, plans being made? Because also with bag or gas, they have different meter sizes. They have a smaller meter for smaller systems. As you get larger, there's more BTU load on um, the system for demand. Um, so they need to know also as well <coughs> what your plans are for the future. You just plan on doing your boiler, and that also makes your water. Most of the time, people do that. Um, we have at homes where we run gas stoves, water heaters, the whole nine years. Um, I don't think there's a lot really else for our side. Just make sure um, you use a qualified company. Um, we've been doing them for a while now. Bangor, Brewer, Cornell. Um, you, you've done larger systems down to there's a gas fireplace if somebody wants a natural gas fireplace. Um, so we, we have a lot of experience. Um, you know, as most people know our company in the area. Uh, but there is other companies around that do very good work. Just make sure that when they do do it, they are following the codes. Um, with natural gas, you're supposed to line your uh, masonry chimney if you're converting from an oil boiler to natural gas in the same boiler. The um, reason for that is natural gas, when it's run through one of those boilers, can create moisture. With the moisture in your chimney, you make sulfuric acid mixing with the soot. In that case, you can actually have a deterioration of the chimney. So we have to run a stainless steel or aluminum liner, depending on um, the application. So just make sure you, you your company that you do use, if not us, if it's somebody else, um, that they do know the ins and outs of um, converting natural gas. Um, like I said, I've, I haven't been around for as long as my father has. Um, he's been you know, doing this for 30 years. I've been doing it since I was 15, so roughly 10 years. Um, but you know, I've seen the process. I've hooked up them myself, um, being one of the first guys at the company with the natural gas license. Um, so. If you guys have questions after, uh, I'm going to be around for the question and answers. So, if there's any questions, I'll uh, go to answer them. Thank you. I believe that, uh, 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 Matt, that the, there's a list on the website still of all of the people, the, uh, the companies that you guys use, contractors, if that's still accurate. Um, so there's a list on, on their website of those you can, the, those, that you, those that you can use. I simply just chose the best one to have here tonight. So because we know that Osborne's got your cabinet. Now, so gas is, is, uh, is coming through the line. It's come up your driveway. And now it has hit to the house. Nick has, has, uh, is ready to put it in your house. The question becomes, um, uh, or I, let me back up there. One step that you know Nick not I didn't uh, necessarily touch on is that uh, one of the things that you want to know is, uh, and uh, Osborne's is the kind of company that you want to call. Is what's it going to cost to to convert my system? I have a system. Um, it's uh, it's just like new. My grandfather put it in in 1922. Um, so I am sure this was only used on Sundays so, um, in the height of the winter. So they'll come in and actually look at your at your existing facility and tell you what you need to do, whether you need to put in a new heating system or whether you can just convert the, the, the burner over uh, or uh, change an orifice if it's a, a propane uh, system. But the, the point is uh, they, can, they can answer the 
kind of questions. Oftentimes, uh, what I've been hearing for the last few years is folks are calling Bangor Gas and saying, well, what's it going to cost to, uh, to convert uh, that over? Bangor Gas is going to be able to tell you that. They're going to tell you that this is what it's going to cost. You know, this is what we have to do in order to be able to get the gas to your house. So, talking with your contractors, they can give you an idea of what that's going to cost to whether you uh, it's a simple conversion or whether it's going to be more complex. Is that fair enough? So the qu next question that you had is, how am I going to pay for that? And I wanted to take the opportunity this evening to um, uh, to hear, have you hear from um, our three banking uh, institutions here in town because uh, they all have uh, a program that can that can help you. With, uh, with these programs, I just want to be able to take the opportunity to, for you to hear from them this evening uh, to, uh, to hear what the individual program, uh, programs might be. As you uh, leave this evening, there is a uh, table outside the, uh, the, the door there that, that they have uh, left uh, information um, so you can pick up. So if you want to be able to take that home and read it at your leisure, um, and be able to contact any of those companies. So first of all, I'm going to start with the Seaboard Federal Credit Union. Uh, so Michelle, you want to come on up here, and uh, you can let us you know paid off quickly, and you're saving on your natural gas on your energy. Uh, that might be a good avenue for you. There's also uh, home equities that are offered, and they start as low as three and a half percent. That's a very low rate, but that's another way. If you know, if you're Nick was saying whether you want to have some of it done, whole shebang, uh, you know, you might want to look at home equity too. Then we also offer fixed rate home equities. If you're a business and you're converting, we'll customize your loan. There's all kinds of, you know, scenarios that we have. There's no one business that's like another, but, um, you know, please come see us if you're just, if you're interested in connecting your business. And uh, I'll turn the microphone over to either Camden or That's something to think about too if you do have 
uh, multiple units and you have people living in there and you want to convert. So uh, just come see us if you have any questions. Of course, businesses making the conversion, we'd be happy to talk to you. And um, thank you very much. Have a good night.
really instrumental in, in walking me through the whole entire process. Um, so I invited him to come here tonight to talk a little bit about the USDA program. So without any further ado, uh, Glenn Blair. Good evening. Thank you again for the town of Oxford for inviting us here. And as Dave mentioned, USDA Rural Development does have two programs that are available. We first of all have what we call our 504 grant program that is for individuals that are 62 years of age or older that are looking to do any type of repairs that need to be done. Repairs also can consist of converting this, your heating system over or any other hookups that you actually need to do. Um, maximum lifetime grant amount that anybody can receive is up to $7,500. There is no application fee, no down payment, no points to pay. There is no mortgage taken against the property. The only condition that USDA attaches to us writing a grant to you is that you, to the best of your ability, must continue to own and occupy the property at least for the next three years. If you were to choose to sell or transfer a title of property out of your name within those three years, then all we ask is that the full amount of the grant be repaid back. That's the only condition that we attach to it. Now, sometimes we also get questions in reference to people that don't meet the 62 age requirement. We also do have what we call our 504 loan program. The 504 loan program, there is no age restriction. That program is a 1% loan. Both of these programs, though, are income qualifying programs. So in order to qualify for either the grant program or the 504 loan program, your total household income does have to meet or be under certain income guidelines. Um, the loan program is there's no application fee, no down payment, no points to pay. The maximum loan amount, though, can go up to $20,000. Any loan that I have to write that is greater than $7,500, then I would need to secure it with a mortgage against the property. Now, the uniqueness of the 504 programs, both the land and the grant, loan and the grant program, is I can piggyback both programs together. So if we have an elderly household that is looking to do conversion to natural gas, plus also looking to do other repairs to their property that potentially need to be done, I can write an elderly loan and grant combination of up to $27,500 if those repairs are going to cost that much. So, again, I'll leave information I'll back um, in reference to our programs. Our office is located in Bangor. I happen to be the individual area specialist that covers all of the Hancock County area, so I'll also leave business cards and any information, but I'll be more than happy to hang around and answer any questions or concerns that anybody would have after the meeting. Thank you. You're thinking you can't compete with that, can you, aren't you? <laughs> Again, uh, uh, had the opportunity to go through that with, with one of our uh, citizens. Um, very successful uh, program, and it worked out uh, worked out very well. So, um, and again, Glenn was extremely helpful um, in uh, in helping us get through the whole process. Um, what I'll be doing um, in the near future, um, actually, what Chris will be doing in the near future, is that we'll we'll put a link on our website on on our natural natural gas page that we've identified at uh, boxportmaine.gov. We'll put a link towards. Um, to the USDA site as well, just to be able to give you um, uh, a head start on, on getting that information. In addition to the to the USDA grant, uh, the town of Oxford was uh, successful in uh, acquiring a community development block grant, um, housing grant, uh, here in Oxford as well. And we received two hundred fifty thousand dollars in that program. Um, and that can be used to improve single and, and multifamily housing. The program will be running through March of 2015. Uh, the applications for uh, for that funding opportunity is on, well, it's also on the it's presently on the town website now, um, where you can uh, get information by calling the community development office uh, in Bangor at 947-8595. Uh, again, 
8595 with the numbers on our website as well. Uh, all uh, eligible applications are reviewed and prioritized by a local CDBG uh, uh, committee here uh, in Boxport. Uh, they look at what the most needs are um, and they can uh, and, and provide the, the, uh, the approval right here locally. Uh, goals of the program are to improve substandard conditions, energy efficiency, and handicap accessibility. In order to qualify for the CDBG grants, uh, community development block grants, a single family homeowner uh, must own their own property for at least one year and be uh, income eligible. Um, there uh, can be no tax, water, or sewer liens on the property. Verification of income is required. Um, the, pro the program can provide 100% grants, um, self-help, uh, uh, in other words, the, uh, the owner uh, putting in the labor to, to do the work is encouraged whenever possible. So that's a, a kind of in-kind uh, grant uh, 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 match for that grant as well. That's for the single-family homes. The multifamily homeowners um, must have income-eligible tenants, and rent levels must be uh, considered affordable. Uh, this program can provide grants up to $5,000 per qualified apartment or 50% of the cost, uh, whichever is less. The building owner must provide 50% matching funds. So there's no matching funds if it's on, on, on the uh, single family homeowners, but it's a dollar for dollar uh, match on the multifamily owners. Uh, there are some other conditions, but you can again, you can, um, you can uh, identify those on, on our website. Uh, energy efficiency and improving housing affordability are important goals of the CDBG grant program. Uh, to achieve uh, this goal, owners of single and multifamily properties may qualify to convert their heating systems to natural gas and replace inefficient windows and doors. Um, Ron Harriman is the uh, administrator for, uh, you know, for that grant program. Uh, and uh, uh, you can uh, you can contact uh, Ron at the uh, uh, at the at his office uh, at that number that I talked about before. Yeah. I'm looking to see where my agenda went. <laughs> Get an extra one. Thank you. So we're at the. Uh, in the presentation, we're doing very well. That uh, I want to be able to open up to uh, uh, questions and answers. So what I'm going to do is uh, I can take the, the, the wireless mic. If you have a question, what I'd like you to do is to um, raise your hand. I'll come around to you so that you can um, that you can uh, ask the question. Um, I'll go to the uh, individual that uh, is, is, be, is able to, to answer it. Um, there you go. You're ready to go. So the reason we're doing this is, is uh, uh, if I didn't say so at the very beginning of it, we're, we're recording this, uh, uh, the forum, so that we can rebroadcast it on our local access television. So for those folks who aren't able to uh, be able to make it here tonight, that, that they can be able to, to get access to this information. So we need the, the microphones and such so that we can, uh, for the recording. So if, if you've got a question, uh, for any one of the speakers that were here this evening, just ask you to, uh, to raise your hand and, and, and our local band up will bring her over here and you can buy a bottle. So. Yes, uh, I was at the last meeting that y'all had, the very first one, and we signed up and had all the paperwork then to say we wanted it, and I just wanted to know if we needed to do that again. I think I checked, I, I called quite frequently. I don't think you have, I understand you don't have the the uh, uh, the issue is is that they're they're not on the uh, on the, the route down because they're working on Federal Street, um, so it's be those ones that have. One of the things that we had talked about at the earlier meeting, and and Matt and I have, uh, have said to uh, customers as they've been um, coming forth to either Bangle Gas or to the town, is that um, how they decide to expand their services is where the most need is. So that even if you're, we've encouraged people that if you're not on the proposed route that they have, still send your information in to them because that gives them, they can track that and see, you know, where the, where their expansions need to, to, to take place. Um, so, and, and, then, and 
their particular case, they said they're they're located on Federal Street, which is the next street over from uh, school uh, from uh, from Central Street. We were having a, a conversation there at the at the open house uh, that the phase two portion of the of the uh, application, uh, the phase two portion of this project is scheduled to be coming down Central Street, but we've we've been having conversations with with Baker Gas that that might not be. Uh, in certainly in their best interest, I know in in Riley's case, it definitely isn't in his best interest because he's the one that's got to deal with um, uh, all the stuff that's underground. The challenge that we have on Central Street is there is a tremendous amount of utilities already underground. And what we've been talking about is they may be better off to to come down Federal Street instead of coming down Central Street. Frankly, because I know because you folks did exactly what we asked you to do is send in those. The applications. I know that just about. I think there may be only one person on Federal Street that hasn't sent that in. Um, so I know that there's a lot of interest in Federal Street. So that may be the uh, the, the direction. But we're, we'll be having that conversation over the winter um, to talk about, uh, about what they'll be doing in, in 2014. Didn't mean to answer that question for you, Matt. But Street, they go to Elm Street. 
And then the next one says it's on Broadway, they go back to Broadway. So it's simply a matter of, as Andrew said, it's first come, first serve. And, uh, and uh, you know, if you want your, to get your list up there to the, to the, to the top, um, you know, he takes small unmarked bills and brown paper bags. So I'm just kidding. I'm actually just kidding. Just Andrew, you know, just kidding. <laughs> Uh, any, uh, I still don't think I have an answer, you know, because I was told that, to, that they were going to have it all worked out by the end of November. Okay, the, the question was... I had two months to, to convert inside before they started charging me, okay, for giving, them, giving me the service in the first place. Okay, the question was, or the statement was, the follow-up to that was, um, you know, he's been given that, uh, uh, you know, he's given his paperwork in. He was told that, uh, you know, he's got two months from the time they get it. That two months is from the time that it's, it's there's a meter sitting on the side of your home. Um, and they're talking about that it would be in there. Um, the one thing that I was, the, the, the timing um, that we haven't spoken about um, is that there was uh, uh, the, the commitment that they were, it would be done in an earlier time period. Unfortunately, um, as I've learned from the folks, uh, the, the installation crew that was uh, from the Carolinas, um, that they never worked with rock before. And they found out that there was, we have something in Maine that, that they weren't really familiar with in the Carolinas. Apparently they used the cornfields too. Yeah, exactly. So maybe uh, Andrew or Andrew can update the folks uh, as to uh, when you're expecting those ones scheduled for uh, installation this year. I, can, I guess I misunderstood your question. You're still waiting for service, or it's in and you're waiting to have a turn no, he's, I'm still waiting for the meter to be put on the side. He's still waiting for the line to come from the, from the street. So I'm right up the sidewalk, right where I'm at. It's only got probably 20 yeah. feet to go to my house. It hasn't been to his side of his house yet. Okay, and I think Andrew addressed it. That's for the 60 days. You have 60 days once the gas is run up to the house, and there's a bar out there, and Osborne's done their, their conversion insight, and then they would call us for us to do a turn on, and then we'd come and hang the meter and go through all the inspection with them, leaks and so forth. So you have 60 days once the gas is live up to the house to turn on, or we bill you for the service. If, if there's the reason for some of the delay, as Dave has mentioned, was the unusual conditions in working in Bucksport, trying to, trying to not degrade the roads and the beautiful community you have by directional boring, which we found out that we couldn't directional bore anymore because of all the boulders and rocks and ledge, which slowed our construction way down. We've now since worked with the town to be able to open cut those areas and that sped up our construction and now we're back on track to get your gas service to you before December 15th is when the last, uh, when we're not allowed to dig in Bucksport anymore or any permits given so we have all the service lines in our schedule and we hope to, to meet that deadline. The, the last conversation that the town had with uh, the bank or gas regarding scheduling was that they were looking at by the end of the first week in December. Uh, I'm looking at what I call Little Andrew. Is that still on track for uh, the end of the first week in December to have all of those folks uh, uh, sign uh, the meters on? Yeah, our goal is right now is to have um, all the service lines for people who have been guaranteed service for this year be done hopefully by the end of the first week of December. So that, the answer to your question, the best answer I can give is that you should have that uh, by the end of the first week of December. So you'll be able to uh, uh, enjoy the fireplace at Christmas time with your natural gas. Yes, I had uh, two questions. One was a safety question. Uh, do you provide a main shutoff outside the home or inside the home for emergencies? Or is, is that practice that's done for gas or not? Yeah. 
on the top of this riser, which you're going to see sticking out of the ground beside your house, there's going to be a, a, a quarter turn shutoff valve that we have the ability to open, close, lock, etc. The customer, as a rule, does not. It's us or the fire department. But that's the shutoff going into your home. As far as a shutoff valve on the street, no. Now, there are mainline shutoff valves throughout the system. I'm not familiar enough to tell you where they're at. But if push comes to shut off, it's a brand new regulated station we built for you across from the mill. It has a shut off valve on the outlet and it shut off the town. So if we have a problem, real bad, we'll just shut off us for it. Then we'll fix it and we'll turn it back home. But each individual service would have this, have the shut off valve on it. Now if it's a school or a large commercial business, the mill obviously is a large commercial business, they have, they're required by federal law to have the what's called a curb valve, a shutoff valve at the curb. Residences are, as a rule, do not. But schools, churches, public buildings, obviously all of the schools in the system have a shutoff valve at their service. It's almost a rule. Come on here. I know that uh, Osborne Heating also can put in a shutoff valve inside the house downstream of our meter set. So there could be a so that when they go in to work on other appliances or they need to shut down a piece of equipment to maintain it or work on it, they can shut the gas off inside the house also. That's something. That's something you can draw or something to mess with the shut off the house. Yeah. But the service technician could use that. Correct. Right. Well, we'll right. Yeah. Right. Gas gas experts or fire departments are the ones that are supposed to be the only ones operating. Another question I had was, as a supply, most, you know, 90% of the natural gas is U.S. This, this gas all comes from Canada, is that correct? Maritime? I'll let you, let you feel this. Um, technically, yes. So the 10% in Maine, the 10% of the nation comes from Maritimes, or Maine comes from Canada. However, when it feeds down to Massachusetts, depending on pricing, they can switch the flow. If this gas is not coming out of Sable Island, they can now take the gas up from Drake and up through Massachusetts up in the main. So the actual mole molecules in the pipe, depending on where the flow is coming from, could be U.S., could be Canadian. Because the, uh, the mill had issue with transportation costs. system, as you said, they can move it from the south rather than all coming in. And I guess the other question was, is that uh, one time the discussion had a second pipeline in, you know, to save more, right? Is that correct? There's, a, there's another well that's come on line to save line called Deep Pinook, and that just came on line late this summer, and we hope that's going to help. Um, not the help with the volatility of gas prices in the weather. Long term stuff, yeah. There's also uh, Tennessee Pipeline is looking at uh, a pipeline. I think it's 180 miles from Mar from Marcellus Shale, where they're finding all the shale gas to come into the Massachusetts market, which then can eventually, on the back feet, go, come up through Maritimes up into Maine. So that should help as well like, with uh, volatility of pricing in the future. Thank you. Mr. Mr. Hey. Yeah, I'm kind of concerned. I'm one of the first ones that was signed up for this. I'm on Broadway here, across from the swimming pool. Uh, what, I don't know what my obligation is going to be committed to. Is that a contract for only me or two people? No, once we, once we run the service up to your house and set the gas meter, if you don't use any gas, all you'll get would be a gas bill for a monthly customer charge. And that's for us to make sure that the line in the street and up to your house is safe. So there would be, if you didn't burn any gas, it'd be a monthly customer charge every month of $14.20. How much? $14.20.
the interim judge at fourteen dollars a month. And grab, will I use any and all? Correct. And that two fourteen plus the, the energy charge on top of that. You don't get any other charges except for the monthly meter charge until you actually consume the actual gas in your house, and then meter stops spinning, which we would like you to do. Now, are you considered a, a, a utility company? We are a local distribution company, a gas company. Think of us as it was regulated by the PUC. So there's three parts to your bill: monthly customer charge, 1420. Then there's a there's a uh, transmission charge, which Bangor Gas makes its revenue. That's 35 cents a third, or three dollars and fifty cents a decatherm. The third part to your bill is the commodity. That's what comes from Maritime's pipeline and comes from Sable Island. Bangor Gas buys that in bulk and passes that on to you. It's uh, obviously supply and demand. It's more expensive in the winter than it is in the summertime. So those are the three parts to your bill. If you don't use any gas, you just pay that monthly customer charge. There's no transmission fee and there's no commodity charge. Street or whether it's from Franklin Street 
um, or to be able to, to get to them. There's only a couple of houses, and I believe yours probably is one of them, uh, that we're looking at as to how we'd be able to do that. And what we wanted, to, what I wanted to be able to do is to look and see if we were to, uh, uh, if we were to come down Federal Street instead of coming down Central Street, so that we can uh, avoid all of those other utilities here on the ground. Is there a way that we can get that service from Federal Street over to you from the backside um, as well? So we're certainly, and I'm just, I guess I would emphasize this is just conversation is that Andrew and I have had is that because I've been involved with doing some um, rather extensive road maintenance on Central Street, I know it's under that street and it is, it is, it makes Elm Street look easy. Uh, and let me just say, to, to uh, poor Andrew that Elm Street was not easy. Uh, he thought he was on Mars. <laughs> uh, so uh, we're looking at to, 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 see, to see that. But the answer to your question is, right now, as it stands, the plan for phase two is to come down Central Street. So if it were to, to change from that, we would certainly be communicating with you and trying to figure out how do we, uh, how do we provide that service and make it, you know, more make it affordable for the gas company uh, to uh, uh, to be able to get down through there. Just frankly, be able to get out there, regardless of that, how they can actually get down through there. I think we can. I think we might be able to access your your property from the backside on, on the on the Federal Street side. Uh, but we're gonna we're gonna we're still we're still talking about that. But I'm, I'm glad you're actually here tonight to to, to hear that. So I would encourage you to stop by town office anytime, and we can, you know, certainly talk more about about your specific property. Does that answer your question. Uh, any other uh, any other questions we've got? Uh, I do. Oh, go right ahead there. Well, while we're going to him, I just wanted to uh, one comment I wanted to be able to make here as well to you folks tonight is that for the citizens of Bucksport. Uh, who have been waiting for a long time for, uh, to get uh, natural gas? Uh, I wanted you to. I wanted to highlight uh, one of our, our council members, uh, Mike Ormsby. Mike has been the sole. He was the first one that came to the the previous town manager and to the council and said, "We need to be looking at natural gas, and we really need to do uh, to look at how we can expand that." And he just never let up. Um, so for the last four or five years. Mike has been a, a, a staunch supporter of really making sure that, uh, that this occurs uh, and how important it is to get natural gas um, here. So to, uh, to, to Mike Holmesby, certainly my, my hat's off to you, sir, to, uh, for, for bringing this up in the first place and sticking with it for as long as we have. Thank you, Dave. Uh, I just have a question on the certification process. Uh, how is that conducted and so that Bango Gas can turn on the gas into the home once it's been piped. Nick, right? Mike. You're Mike. You're Nick. I'm Mike. Uh, basically what happened, the certification process, we will install the service to the house and hang a meter bar on the side of the house. Osborne will come in and take their measurements and get the conversion package and they'll run all their piping in the house, get the boiler and stuff all hooked up, ready to go, and do their testing back to us, which involves basically just a very short pressure test to make sure their pipe is nice and tight, all their fittings are correct, and so on and so forth. We then give them a piece of paper, it's called a compliance checklist. It's got all those little boxes on it. We did this, you did this, we did this, you did this. And they signed it basically saying they have met all of the NFPA, there's a variety, there's two or three different codes, but it's federal code requirements that have to be met. Their sign and say they did all their part, our turn on people sign it to say they did their part, they hang the meter, we turn the gas on, he lights your boiler up, turns it up to high fire, make sure everything's working right, and it's done. A turn on itself from start to finish. If it goes nice and smooth, lasts a whopping half hour. And with the certification process, we keep. I don't know whether you guys get a copy of it or not. Okay. 
you write a license number, their signature at the bottom. We keep that on file in your customer service file, basically. It says, at this date, these people did this, everything was fine, and from then on, it's good to go. Okay? Any other uh, uh, questions? Uh, it, uh, I know uh, I don't need to put you on the spot, but we have uh, uh, an incoming uh, council member too, uh, Byron Bittens here this evening. Byron, any, if you're, any comments you want to make about the, 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 uh, the gas coming in in, the, uh, in town? Again, I don't want to put you on the spot, but uh, we'll give you the opportunity to, um, as a member of the leadership of the community, No, basically it's just, it's a project that, uh, as you said, life is um, shepherded for a number of years, and the council as a whole has been very supportive uh, through a couple changes in the council and everything else, and we are all just so pleased to have it finally in place, and uh, we're looking for a long-term friendly relationship with Bangor Gas. Thank you, sir. Any other questions? If not, I'm getting you out here on, on time. Those, uh, some of you, uh, 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 some of these folks will be staying around afterwards. So if you have uh, further questions uh, that uh, that you have, um, feel free to, uh, to stop talk with them. If you think about questions that uh, after you get home, feel free to go on to our our, uh, our website, uh, BoxportMaine.gov. Um, and uh, uh, and you can shoot us questions um, if we can't. We can we'll get them answered if we can't answer them. We'll give them to Bangor Gas and, and get the answers back to you. I'll, uh, uh, and then uh, lastly, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Brennan, you have our, our closing remarks. 